This is Creepy, a podcast dedicated to sharing the most famous, chilling, and disturbing creepy pastas and urban legends in the world. Whether these stories truly happened or are simply fabrications is for you to decide. These stories may contain graphic depictions of violence and explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. Creepy presents Melt Man. Written by Ryan Peacock. I don't know if this is going to go through. I, I hope it does. God, I fucking hope this gets through. If I don't make it out of this, Brooke, I need you to know that I love you. I love you more than anything, and I can't stand the thought of you waking up tomorrow and thinking I just left you behind. If I don't make it, I hope you'll know where to look, and you'll know that I love you. I don't see him right now. Maybe that means I'll be okay. No. No, I should know better than that. Everywhere I go, he's there. Just ahead. I keep expecting to look up and see him standing underneath that streetlight. Or to see his shadow in the fog. Maybe he won't approach the car. He didn't seem to move much before. Although I never stopped to give him much of a chance either. Maybe I'll be okay. Maybe. God, please just let me make it out of this alive. Okay, let's dial it back here. Let's start at the beginning. My name is Darren, and last I knew I was off Highway 24 just outside of Paris, Ontario. I think I'm still close to there. I took a few turns, so I'm not entirely sure anymore. I haven't recognized the road I'm on for some time now. The map on my phone doesn't seem to work anymore, but I can't be that far away. I've had insomnia ever since I was a kid. Back then, I just never wanted to go to bed. Nowadays, I just can't shut my brain off sometimes. Sometimes I'm thinking about work. Sometimes it's just anxiety. Sometimes I just feel like I didn't do enough during the day. Sometimes it's just straight up existential terror induced by pondering the mysteries of the universe that you never seem to think about until you're trying to sleep. When it gets like that, I find that going for a drive helps. It gives me something to focus on and it grounds me for a bit. I like that. For a couple hours, it's just me on the road. Usually I'll listen to podcasts while I drive. Horror podcasts are my favorite. I've got a list of recommendations a mile long. Some people act like I'm weird for listening to scary stories while I drive through the darkened back roads. Personally, I find it calming and it helps me get more into the stories. I've been going for a lot of nighttime drives lately. Working from home and being cooped up doesn't really work for me. I never used to love my commute, but I find myself missing it more and more lately, you know? Anyway, tonight I couldn't sleep, and that was nothing new. There's nothing specific on my mind. I guess I just felt restless, and the idea of going out and driving along the back roads and listening to a couple of podcast episodes seemed appealing. My girlfriend, Brooke, was already in bed. She doesn't have quite the same problem nodding off that I do. Between the two of us, I'm the night owl. She knows about my late night drives. No point in keeping it a secret from her. If she was wandering off in the middle of the night, I'd probably want to know where she was going. I know she finds them a little odd, but she never tried to stop me or anything. They're just one of my eccentricities. Everybody has at least a couple. It was a little after one when I went out to my car. Our street was dead silent. I like it when it's quiet like that. It feels so strangely peaceful. Like I'm the only person in the world. There's not another soul in sight out there and almost no other sounds. I got into my car, queued up a podcast, and pulled out onto the street. There was a bit of mist illuminated by the street lights. I remember thinking that it was kind of pretty and added to the atmosphere of the liminal space that my street had become. I liked it. When I drove through it, the mist swirled past my windshield and accompanied me through the quiet streets as I made for the back roads. 
The back roads are dark, quiet, and lonely at night. You don't often see other cars, and that's the way I like it. Occasionally, there's the odd hyper-masculine lunatic in a pickup truck who decided that going 10 to 20 over the speed limit isn't enough. So after blinding you from behind with their headlights, they rocket past you, usually without signaling, and disappear into the night. I only saw one of those tonight, on the way out of town. I wonder if he ran into the same trouble I did. Would it be wrong for me to say that I kinda hope he did? Yeah. Yeah, it would be wrong. I drove one of my usual routes, a highway that took me through one of the local small towns in my area. There's lots of them. More than I could possibly list. My plan was to do a circuit once I hit a larger city. It'd be roughly a two-hour drive, but I knew I'd come off of it feeling refreshed. I just passed the main drag of that small town when I hit an empty stretch of road. It was dark, save for the odd streetlight. There was nothing on either side of me but farmland and the occasional patch of forest. I didn't drive too fast. It was a deer country. I've seen enough carcasses on the side of the road to know to be careful. I've been lucky enough to never see a deer in front of my car, but if I ever do, I'd like to be as careful as possible. I must have been about 45 minutes to an hour out when I noticed that I hadn't seen any road signs in a while. Like I said, this was one of my usual routes, so I had certain landmarks that I recognized as I passed them. Usually there were signs noting what small township I'd entered. Most of them had interesting names. Some of them were kind of silly. I hadn't seen a sign in a while, though. Come to think of it, I couldn't clearly remember the last sign that had passed. I didn't think too much of it. The road I was on runs straight with a few side roads coming off of it. Most of them are little dirt roads that I'd prefer not to drive on at night. I took a look at my car's clock to check my time and saw that the numbers were all scrambled though. Now that was kind of odd. I'd never seen that happen before. I wondered if there was something wrong with my battery or if my stereo was crapping out. I couldn't see the time on the dashboard either. Those readings were weird too. My engine temp had gone down to zero. My speedometer seemed to twitch more and my gas gauge kept moving back and forth in the weirdest way. The hell was this? Some sort of weird glitch? Maybe it would be smarter to turn back, just in case there was something wrong with my car. I pulled over to the side of the road and parked, waiting to see if the issues would sort themselves out. There was a lonely streetlight just ahead of me, but I couldn't get a good look at the landscape around me. I assumed it was farmland, but it was too dark to tell if there were any houses nearby. I checked my phone. The signal was spotty. Even if I wanted to call for a tow or something, I wasn't sure I'd be able to. I tried to open up the internet to look up my issues with limited success. My connection was spotty as hell, which was weird. I'd never had problems out this way before. I was fucking with my phone when I noticed movement out of the corner of my eye straight ahead in the direction of the streetlight. I looked up just in time to see the shape of someone in the darkness ahead of me. Then as soon as I noticed them, I couldn't help but stare. Who the hell in their right mind would be walking along a road like this at night? It was pitch black. They would have been easy to miss. They could have got themselves killed. It was around then that I noticed they were headed towards my car and I wondered for a moment if maybe they'd run into the same issues I had. Shit. Maybe they were looking for a ride? My car was still running. I'd never really picked up a hitchhiker before. But if they were having problems too, it seemed like the right thing to do. I rolled down my window, which also glitched out a bit. I had to fight it to get it down, and called out to the stranger. Hello? They didn't respond. They just kept getting closer and closer. For a moment I wondered if it was even a person and not a deer I'd somehow mistaken for a person. Then they stepped into the light and, well, let's just say that it didn't make figuring out just what they were any easier. I'd say that it looked like a man, but only in the absolute vaguest sense of the word. Man might not even be the correct word to use here. It looked more like a plastic action figure or something that had been partially melted and allowed to cool down again, or some kids attempting to draw a person come to life. The face was... Jesus. 
That thing's face just looked warped and contorted. One eye drooped down lower than the other. The skin looked rubbery and moved all wrong. In some spots it seemed too soft, in others it sagged off that thing. The skin was a pale orange and the eyes were shiny and beady. The mouth just sort of hung open in a perpetual dopey grin. It looked like it was naked, although I couldn't see any signs of human anatomy on this thing. The body looked just as melted as the face with drooping folds hanging down. It seemed to shuffle forward with an unnatural stiffness that was uncomfortable to watch. Staring at this absurd thing, all I could do was blink in disbelief. The melted man came to a step beneath the streetlight and stared back at me. Then he raised one hand with six fingers of varying length and he waved at me. I swear that I saw his stupid grin growing wider as he did. That was when I lost it. Look, what I just described may not sound all that creepy, but tell me what you'd do if some weird melt man shambled towards you from the side of the road. I threw the car and drive and got the hell out of there. As I left the thing behind, I saw it in my rearview mirror. It turned around to face me, and it was still waving. The sight of it sent a chill through me. I tore down the darkened road until the meltman was gone. Then I tried to make sense of just what the fuck it was I'd just seen. That wasn't a person, right? There was no way in hell it could have been a person. No person could possibly look like that. Maybe it was a suit of some kind. Yeah, that's it. It had to be. It was a suit or something. Some asshole was probably just chilling out in a lame monster suit and trying to spook whoever was passing by. Good prank. Very funny. I'd probably be on some idiot's YouTube channel or something now. I was almost starting to laugh it off when I noticed another streetlight up ahead. The exact same streetlight. On the same side of the road. And beneath it, there was the exact same thing. Raising a hand to wave at me again. I felt my blood run cold. Its hand waved back and forth. I saw the skin shifting from either side of it as if it didn't quite fit its body just right. It was still grinning. I couldn't see any teeth in its mouth. But in the yellowish light from the lamp overhead, I could see a river of some clear liquid dribbling out of one drooping corner of its mouth. Something about the sight of that turned my stomach a little. No. No, this wasn't possible. I caught myself just staring at it as I drove, half in disbelief, half in terror. I almost veered off the road. I only barely managed to correct myself in time. The melt man just kept watching me, hand raised and greeting the whole time as I left him behind again. Again, he disappeared into my rearview mirror, his eyes still focused on me. My heart was pounding. There was no way in hell they'd put two assholes in bad costumes along this stretch of highway. If they did, they'd have some fantastic fucking dedication to this stupid prank of theirs. And why hadn't I passed any road signs? What the fuck was wrong with my car? Everything was still on the fritz. I was pretty sure that part wasn't a prank. This didn't make any sense. Up ahead, I noticed a glimmer of another vehicle at the side of the road light mist swirling around it, and I caught myself slowing down slightly, wondering if maybe it was someone else caught in the same bizarre situation that I was. There were no lights on, no sign that the car was even occupied. Was it abandoned? Who the hell would leave an abandoned car on the side of the road? As I got closer, I got something of an answer. The driver's side door was missing. It looked as if it had been ripped clean off. The car sat forgotten like an empty shell, and the sight of it sent a sickening chill through me. I rolled past the empty car, staring at it. It looked like a newer model. Not brand new, but new enough. I never thought to get the license plate. Maybe if I did, I could give someone else some closure. No. I just kept driving feeling my pulse racing faster than before. I gripped the steering wheel tight. Ahead, I could see another car at the side of the road. A different one. I had to veer into the next lane to avoid it. Passing by, I saw that this one had a shattered windshield. 
I couldn't help but imagine the screaming occupant being dragged out. I didn't want to imagine just what it was that was dragging him out either. There were more cars ahead of me, more than I could count, but it wasn't until I saw that goddamn streetlight again, with the same melted figure waiting for me beneath it, that I thought to turn around. With my heart racing, I pulled into a hasty three-point turn that nearly took me off the road. The melt man just kept waving at me as I did so, smiling that same goddamn dopey smile the whole time. Even when I sped back the way I came, he just waved. Why wouldn't he wave? He probably knew it was only a matter of time until we saw each other again. He'd be waiting for me under the next streetlight. Or the same streetlight. Hard to say. I didn't remember seeing so many abandoned cars at the side of the road, going back the way I came. There was one every couple of kilometers. All of them with doors torn off or the windshield smashed. Sometimes both. One had the fucking roof torn right off of it. All of them were empty and forgotten. Some were even starting to rust. God only knew how long they'd been there for. I kept driving. I kept driving for as long as I could. Sometimes I'd see a street light with the melted man beneath it, waving jovially at me. I just drove past him and tried not to look at him. I drove back for a hell of a lot longer than an hour but the sky didn't get any brighter. I kept passing vacant cars, and it was never the same car twice. Each one was different. Some of them didn't even look like makes and models I'd seen in Canada before. Some of them looked old, as if they'd been sitting there for decades. Every now and then I'd see a street light, and he would be under it, waving at me like nothing was wrong. I kept trying not to look at him, as if maybe... If I ignored him enough times, he'd ultimately go away. He never did. I kept driving into the darkness. My clock still wasn't working, but it felt like I'd been driving for longer than an hour. Maybe two or three hours. I should have been back home by now, but the road didn't change. There were no turns. Nothing on either side of me but heavy forest as far as I could tell. Just an empty highway with more streetlights waiting for me ahead. Each one with the same goddamn melt man waiting for me beneath it. I ran out of gas about an hour ago. My gas gauge is flipping between empty and half empty. But the car won't move anymore. The engine just turns over if I try to start it. I can't keep moving. I'm not sure it would matter even if I could. I feel like I've been out here for hours. Maybe it's been days. I'm getting tired of running. There's a street light ahead of me. There was nothing there before, although I looked up while I was writing this and saw him. He was waving, still wearing that dopey fucking grin of his. I just looked up again. He's closer than he was before. He's probably just teasing me having as much fun as he can before he pries open my car like the rest. I've considered trying to make a run for it, but I don't know about my chances. I've got a feeling it won't save me. I don't think there's any way out at this point. He's getting closer to the car. I've got a bit of a signal. I tried calling someone, but I can't seem to get through. I'm going to try posting this. Maybe it'll manage to get out there. I hope it does. I really really hope it does. Maybe it'll save someone else's life. God, I'm gonna die here, aren't I? Jesus Christ, I'm gonna fucking die here. Brooke, I'm sorry. I love you. 